a real newsroom broadcast studio, live from a trade show, where we have, have access it just two days before. Eight hours live per day, multiple roving reporters, a crew that we never met before, six people, and just two months from start to finish, entirely done in the cloud. So, we got this cool idea. Why don't we run a real live newsroom for the trade show? So, let's imagine we go to NLB and we are going to produce the event for real, including building the studio and the production control room. Why not? Let's do that. I get a call from Simone telling me about the project that we're about to do for NAB, which is Newsroom in the Cloud. And immediately I start to think about all the different components that are required to make it happen. So if I were to think of the workflow from on-premises to the cloud, think of partners to enable cameras, to microphones, to headsets, to lights, to LED walls, and then in the cloud, audio mixing, vision mixing, editing, servers, and then the entire workflow for audio, right? So comms and audio mixing, and of course, all the components that come with it, just to name a few. This isn't a demo. This is a real broadcast. And so this is not one of those things that you can take 80% of the way there or 90% of the way there. We have to go 100% of the way. Because anything short of that, and we don't have a show. Like, we have to be able to broadcast live. This is legit. We're even running a teleprompter in the cloud. The hardest thing about building all this broadcast infrastructure on-prem is the easy part of building a newsroom in the cloud. Normally you would need network architects, network engineers, infrastructure people, systems people. One person built all of this in the cloud from a room in Sydney and then was able to hand it off to the partners to do their commissioning. The sights and sounds originate on site. So the first challenge is always getting the stuff into the cloud. So there is a thin layer of on-premises hardware that we just have to have. Then we can roll in, connect to just our control surfaces and just our cameras, and then we're up and running. So it really cuts down the time it takes to actually spool up a production on site. I can't remember holding my breath for so long in a trade show. <laughs> is everything going to work? And then, yes, it is. So that feeling of not only relief, but actually it all came together, it makes sense, and it's happening in the cloud. It was one of those nothing to see here moments. And, you know, we ended up uh, pulling it off and turned out a, a pretty clean show. A simple show, but a clean show. NAB already had a crew in place that was the crew that was producing NAB show before. These guys have never operated a cloud facility, a cloud environment. So how do I going to react about the latency? And will they see some problem of uh, delay or some other particular aspects. After the first day, everybody forget that all of these were running with the cloud. It felt like something we all were used to. And again, people with 20 years of experience in the industry cannot understand the difference. You don't even realize that you're using the cloud anymore. It just kind of like melts into the background. And all of a sudden you get all of the benefits of the cloud too, right? You have that elasticity to be able to turn things on and off. You can spin up backup switchers, backup audio mixers, backup intercom systems, and you're able to do this very quickly with something like a CloudFormation template. That changes the way we start to think about television production. So many broadcast studios today are provisioned for the largest show that they do, right? If you switch the Super Bowl or you switch the Olympics, you have a switcher that's capable of handling all of those inputs. That's just sitting there idle 360 days of the year, except for the five days that you're doing your big show. So as we look at live cloud production and what we're able to do with these systems, it's genuinely going to change the way that customers think about the economics of how this is done. It's going to allow them to make more content. It's going to be able to allow them to capture some of the long tail content that maybe they've wanted to capture for a long time. Like we really want those D3 college sports to be able to be broadcast online and up till now, it's just like, oh, well, you know, we can't afford $100,000 of equipment. Well, with live cloud production, you don't need that. You're able to provision what you need, size it right, turn it on, use it, turn it off. And it just becomes a whole new paradigm for the industry. The whole idea of 
building a project like this is, we like to make sure that we know the answers before it gets in front of a customer. Making sure that we have explored all the options and you know, really dive deep into what it actually means to deploy this in front of a customer. We've definitely learned a lot. We've done it using our own stuff. And so any sharp edge that our customers might feel, we felt that sharp edge. And it's gonna allow us to go out and build better products and services and find new and creative ways to make this easier and more reliable and require less configuration. I'm quite proud of the team that put this together. I mean, there have been some very late nights and very early mornings, but um, we would absolutely go back and do this again. It was absolutely fun and uh, a moment of pride, yeah. Getting so deep on the details of how to make things work, I can in confidence talk to customers about it and say, hey, like we've, we've actually seen this work and we got it cool. If we were able to pull this off, in the amount of time with the level of resources that we had, that any broadcaster would be able to pull this off.